The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild unpacks a lot of story across its vast playtime. It's an epic narrative that kicks off 10,000 years in the past before coming to a suitably heroic climax within the depths of Hyrule Castle. Add into the mix a whole load of key story beats told via flashbacks, and there's a lot to reacquaint yourself with. So whether you played Breath of the Wild back in 2017 and want a story recap, or are just jumping into Tears of the Kingdom, let's break down the story so far. Okay, so the story of Breath of the Wild kicks off a long, long time ago. Like 10,000 years before the main events of the game. We are well past the era of myth, a time where the rest of the Zelda timeline takes place. For more info on that, make sure to check out my Zelda timeline video. And Hyrule has now entered an age of prosperity. Thanks to the technological advancements of the Sheikah tribe, the realm of Hyrule is ready for just about anything. And anything turns up in the form of the revived beast of Ganon, the boar-like alter ego of the legendary demon thief Ganondorf. Using the technological might of the Sheikah, which includes an entire army of tentacled robots called Guardians, and four giant kaiju-esque machines known as the Divine Beasts, the princess of the royal family and the chosen hero are able to repel Ganon, and he's sealed away underneath Hyrule Castle. And with the job done, and in a bid to subdue the Sheikah tribe's technological dominance, the King of Hyrule orders for the Guardians and the Divine Beasts to be scrapped, which results in them getting buried deep underground. The King's a fool though and clearly hasn't paid attention during Hylian history lessons, as that Ganon lad is most certainly coming back, and the King will need those giant robots. Anyway, peace extends across the lands and the King will probably be long dead by the time Ganon's back, so what does he care? Alright, 10,000 years pass by and this brings us to about 100 years before the main events of Breath of the Wild. The story of the fight against Ganon has become the thing of legend, a tale of the big bad boogeyman told to scare little ones. Hyrule, while far from the technological powerhouse it was in the days of old, is still a great hub of civilization, and into this magnificent realm is born the latest incarnation of Princess Zelda. The joy of her birth for the royal family and the people of Hyrule is tempered somewhat though by a prophecy from a local fortune teller, who foresees the return of Ganon and the devastation of Hyrule. But there's also a note of hope in their message, with the news that the power to oppose Ganon can be found deep underground. Thank Hylia then for Princess Zelda, whose royal bloodline has typically provided her predecessors with sacred sealing powers, crucial to repelling the big boar himself. However, when Zelda is six, her mother sadly passes away and takes all her knowledge and experience of these powers to the grave, all of which leaves young Zelda in something of a pickle. Without a tutor to help her, she struggles to awaken her powers despite several pilgrimages to sacred springs dotted around Hyrule. And with her powers failing her, Zelda throws herself headfirst into researching the ancient Sheikah technology, which helps her build an understanding of other avenues to help defend Hyrule. With Zelda doing her absolute best amidst dire circumstances, the king orders for the search and excavation of the divine beasts to begin in earnest. The first to be found are the beasts situated in Gerudo Canyon and Zora's Domain, which spurs on the hunt to find the others. And with a team of researchers trying to figure out how to actually use them, the search then extends to find four champions that can pilot them. And the team that's finally assembled includes Princess Mifa of the Zora, Daruk of the Goron, Rivali of the Rito, and Urbosa, Chief of the Gerudo. But wait, there's one more piece to the puzzle, and that, my good friends, is our hero Link. This latest iteration of the legendary hero is something of a country bumpkin, who has worked his way up the ranks of the Hylian army. Just how he came into possession of the fabled Master Sword isn't exactly detailed, but it's definitely a fair few years before he's appointed as Zelda's personal knight. He receives this distinguished honour by defeating a renegade guardian during a trial run at Hyrule Castle, and that rounds out the team that stands in the way of Ganon's inevitable return. This is it then. Are you sure? Positive. It's awake. Ganon. All of which brings us to the Day of Reckoning itself. While returning from a pilgrimage at the Spring of Wisdom, the champions witness the devastating return of Calamity Ganon, and his initial onslaught is relentless. Not to be overcome by the Guardians once again, Ganon sends out waves of pure malice that possess the stores of Guardians kept underneath Hyrule Castle in giant Sheikah pillars. Hyrule Castle and nearby Castle Town are absolutely devastated, and countless Hyruleans die almost immediately, the King included. 
Shocked by the carnage taking place before them, Link, Zelda and the four champions finally spring into action, with Link and Zelda heading to face off against Ganon himself, while the champions head to their respective beasts. Ganon is no fool though, and he fires off giant blobs of malice to take control of the divine beasts. These blobs manifest themselves as phantom projections of Ganon, who square off against the champions before killing them and sealing their spirits within their giant metal monsters. So far, so brutal. With Hyrule Castle a literal hellscape, Link and Zelda turn face and retreat to the relative safety of Fort Hateno. Link is an absolute boss right up to the very end, successfully shepherding Zelda to safety while taking out a handful of guardians in the process. But the man has his limits. His strength finally gives out en route to Fort Hateno, and he gives in to his inevitable demise at the onslaught of Ganon. But in that moment, Zelda rushes to protect him, and that's when her sacred power finally awakens as the Triforce of Wisdom presents itself on the back of her hand. The light stretching forth from Zelda incapacitates the relentless march of the Guardians and stems the flow of their destruction, buying the pair some time. With Link at death's door, a mysterious voice talks to Zelda from within the Master Sword and guides her on what to do next. The sword prompts Zelda to get Link to the Shrine of Resurrection, to allow him the time he needs to heal his wounds. While Zelda treks back to return the Master Sword to its pedestal in the forest under the watchful eyes of the Great Deku Tree, the Sheikah take Link's comatose body to the shrine to reclaim its strength. And with Zelda's power fully restored, she heads off to Hyrule Castle to confront Calamity Ganon, where she is able to suppress his power and stop his evil invasion of Hyrule. Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. Okay, we're a good whack into this video already, and we're only just at the beginning of the main story of Breath of the Wild. After a century of slumber, Link awakens completely revitalized. Well, when I say completely revitalized, I mean in physical terms. His body has been healed, but his memories of his former life are totally gone. Fortunately, the Sheikah who left Link in the Shrine of Resurrection have left him with a Sheikah Slate, a little gadget that coincidentally looks exactly like a Wii U, or a Nintendo Switch if you're squinting. The Slate holds photographic memories from Link's past, which are there as guiding lights for him to refind his way in the daunting landscape of Hyrule. Either way, Link ambles on down from the shine to the nearby ruins of the Temple of Time, where he bumps into a mysterious old wanderer. This old boy regales Link with the story of Calamity Ganon, and the present circumstances of Hyrule, notably that the four divine beasts have recently started causing a ruckus across the realm. He directs Link to reactivate the Great Plateau Tower, an ancient Sheikah monument that restores map data to your slate and gives you some stunning views of the world to boot, before aiding Link in establishing the Sheikah Slate's full powers via four local shrines. How does this lad know so much? Well, that's because he's only the spirit of the long dead king. With this revelation, the king implores Link to come to the aid of his daughter Zelda, who's still locked in an intense battle with Calamity Ganon in Hyrule Castle. He gifts Link a nifty paraglider and points him in the direction of Kakariko Village before evaporating away. And so Link's epic quest truly begins. You must hurry, Link. Link makes his way to Kakariko Village. There he meets Impa, a Sheikah elder who's one of the few people that know the full story about Zelda and Calamity Ganon. Impa delivers Zelda's message to Link, which instructs him to free the four divine beasts and take the fight back to Ganon. And while you can technically tackle them in whatever order you choose, let's start with the elephant in the room. Literally. Link heads to a nearby Zora's domain, which has largely been untouched by Ganon's carnage due to its location deep within the eastern canyons of Hyrule. But the Zora's luck is at an end, however, as the divine beast Varuta, so named for the legendary Zora princess who aided the Hero of Time, has started rampaging in the eastern reservoir and is threatening to flood and destroy the entirety of Zora's domain. With the help of the toppest of top lads, Prince Sidon, Link manages to gain access to the giant elephant before defeating the Phantom in residence and reactivating the Divine Beast to aid in the destruction of Ganon. From Zora's domain, Link travels north towards the imposing site of Death Mountain, home to the mining communities of the Gorons. Chief among these communities is Goron City, which has also gone unscathed from the Great Calamity and has now become a thriving hub of industry. But the salamander-like divine beast Varudania has somewhat put a stop to all of that from its perch atop Death Mountain. 
While an active volcano is concern enough, the beast has started firing out giant balls of flaming magma as well, which, you know, makes the place even more inhospitable. Link rocks up in flame-resistant armour no less, and chats to the Goron elder Bludo about the issue. And long story short, he boards the Divine Beast, kills another Phantom Ganon, and Bob's your uncle, another beast is on the good side. Next up on the Divine Checklist is the Flying Beast Van Meadow, which is soaring among the clouds high above the western mountains of Hyrule. Directly below the Metal Monster's flight path is Rito Village, home to the bird-like Rito tribe. As the Divine Beast is shooting down anything and everything that comes into close proximity, the tribe can no longer move freely through the skies around their own village, which you know isn't exactly ideal. After a botched attempt to board the Flying Beast from a pair of renegade Rito whippersnappers, Link enters the scene to offer his support, and Link, with the help of one of the young Rito lads, soars into the sky, disables the beast, kills another Phantom Ganon, and restores peace to Rito Village and its surrounding mountains. All of which leaves one divine beast left, and that's the giant camel stomping around the deserts of Gerudo causing huge thunderstorms. The Gerudo Desert has largely gone untouched by the carnage caused by Ganon, but that doesn't mean it hasn't got its fair share of problems. Chief among them is, well, the Chief. Young and inexperienced, Lady Riju struggles with controlling her ranks of Gerudo soldiers. And after a failed recon attempt to get more intel on the divine beast Van Naboris, a sacred treasure known as the Thunder Helm is stolen by the Yiga clan. Enter Link, who's disguised as a woman because no men are allowed into Gerudo Town. He aids Lady Riju in finding and retrieving the Thunder Helm, which handily grants him the lightning resistance needed to get close to the rampaging Camel Beast. He does so, offering another Phantom Ganon, and hey ho, the Camel ceases its mad stomping and sets its sights on Hyrule Castle and Calamity Ganon. And with all four Divine Beasts wrestled away from Ganon's control, Link is ready to take on the Calamitous Monster himself. But before he does so, there are a few more errands left to sort. First things first is the small matter of the whereabouts of the fabled Master Sword. After exploring Hyrule high and low, Link tracks it down to its location in Korok Forest, and after being deemed worthy, retakes possession of the iconic blade. But wait, there's actually one more divine bee still to tame, and well, it's a little different than the others. Yep, the story DLC expansion, The Champion's Ballad, actually takes place after you've freed the four Divine Beasts, but before you take on Ganon. The Champion's Ballad sees Link journey across Hyrule, tackling various trials on the behest of a monk called Maz Koshia. En route, Link bumps into Cass, a Rito bard who's compiling his master's unfinished song, and inadvertently helps his feathered friend finish the verses. After completing the trials and besting the monk in combat, Link is gifted with the Master Cycle Zero, and is let loose on the unsuspecting horse-riding people of Hyrule. Before he can tear up the realm though, Cass stops Link to regale him with the now complete song, which triggers another recovered memory in which all five champions are officially knighted at Hyrule Castle. And with that happy reminiscence fueling him, Link heads for a climactic battle with Calamity Ganon. Link enters the festering ruins of Hyrule Castle and, guided by Zelda's voice, finds the hideous beast in an inner sanctum. Nestled away in a cocoon to build his strength, Calamity Ganon erupts into an immediate battle with Link, but with the able support of the Divine Beasts, piloted by the freed spirits of the Long Dead Champions, Link is able to overcome the foul monster. But defeat only makes Ganon angrier, and his pure hatred and malice transforms him into the giant Dark Beast Ganon, which starts storming around the open fields surrounding Hyrule Castle. To aid Link in this final battle, Zelda presents him with the Bow of Light, and the pair overcome the giant boar before Zelda seals him away forever, an act that finally brings peace back to the lands of Hyrule. And as Link and Zelda survey the scene of their dramatic victory, they immediately get to work planning the rebuilding of Hyrule. While Zelda admits her powers have dwindled over the century she's been holding Ganon at bay, she confides in Link that if everyone works together, they can restore Hyrule to its former glory. And on that note of wonderful positivity, Breath of the Wild draws to a close. 
I hope you've enjoyed this story recap, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.